Believe me, I'll tell you what's wrong with this organization. Communications, that's what's wrong. Send a memo. From now on, people around here have got to communicate better. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Communications in this organization uh, are going to be straightened out at once. Every section head is, um, is responsible for uh, doing an immediate survey in depth. What is it? I don't know. Something's wrong with the company's communication setup. Oh. So this memo came down from the front office, and it said we should all talk to each other more, and, and when Mr. Sawyer asked me what I needed, I told him a powder blue telephone would make my desk just perfect. So next week, they're going to start putting in... A whole new telephone system? But I didn't want a whole new telephone system. I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. I meant communications, communications, communications. That's right. Communications. Not just sending a cable or a wire, not public speaking, not writing a letter, nor watching TV or a movie, but something much less obvious. Communications between human beings. The constant creation of understanding between people. There's always a sender and always a receiver. You hope. And ideas or feelings or facts to establish between them. As a communicator, you have to get through to people. First, to be understood. To get something across to somebody so he or she knows exactly what you mean. It can be a policy change, or a change of schedule, or it can be your intentions or feelings in the form of correction, or your frame of mind in the form of almost anything. The second communication objective is to be accepted, to get people to agree with you, or at least give your communication a hearing. The third objective is action to get something done, so your communication affects performance, improves it. You get action because the receiver understands what you want done, why he or she should do it. There's a fourth communications objective, to understand others, to know how they feel about a particular situation or conditions in general, to be aware of how they feel about you, a communication isn't just something that goes from you to others. It's something that takes place between you and others. Sure, this is how you communicate with words. With some people, you've got to write the words every time because they believe only what they see. But some people only half read what you write or are too busy to read what you write. So these people, you always have to tell. With others, you have to combine methods. You tell and you write. You can communicate with some people over the telephone and they'll understand. But with others, you have to be more personal. They have to see you to understand. The method of communication can sometimes determine the effectiveness of the communication itself. Sure, the method of communication varies. And you have to keep choosing, knowing when a personal visit is better than calling over the telephone, when a written communication is better than a spoken one. Obviously, you can't pay a personal visit across the country or over the ocean every time you want to communicate a change in plans. Several things determine your choice in method. Subject matter, cost, and time are important. Time in the sense of which method will get the thought, fact, or idea across quickly. And time in the sense of when is the best time to put the method to work. Let's call this timing, knowing when to communicate. Now, some people just won't hear you if they're busy doing something else. You communicate, and the ear hears it. I'd appreciate it very much. But there's something else that hears, too. Appreciated my foot. Just making it tough for me. So he'll catch me in another mistake. 
sometimes the heart hears something quite different because people feel, you know, not just once in a while, but every second, every beat. They think and they feel, think, feel, think, feel, worry, impatience, conceit, nervousness, carelessness, indifference, aggressiveness, insecurity, anger, and a hundred other emotional things people are that form barriers to communications. These are what you have to plow through with each communication you send out. A frightened man thinks and feels differently from one who's secure. Communicate an order to the bold, aggressive kind of person. A big account possibility just broke. It's a tough nut to crack, but I'd like you to go out right away and handle it. It all depends on you, boy. You bet, Bob. I'll get right after it. Well, these same words might be received in an entirely different way by a less experienced, more fearful man. A big account possibility just broke. It's a tough nut to crack, but I'd like you to go out right away and handle it. It all depends on you, boy. Gee, I don't know enough to handle something like that. What if I mess it up? Oh, by myself? Oh, I can't handle that. On the other hand, with understanding of Paul's emotional barriers and a little sensitivity. A terrific opportunity, and I know you can handle it. It's similar to the Appleby account you sold last week. Come to me if you need help. Remember, we're with you. I'll get right after it. Sure, the same communication can be wrongly received because of the attitudes, the personalities, the barriers inside people. Sometimes the same words mean different things to different people. Harry, what did the... You told me to do a model job, and I worked hard on it. Believe me, a more perfect model you won't get. But we needed... And I didn't mean a model. I meant a model job, a perfect job, a good job, a real job. But that's not what you said. Don't listen to what I say, listen to what I mean. Well, you can't always be certain of how people think or feel or what they know. That's why it often pays off to plan for communication. Before you pick up the telephone or write a memo or go out personally to communicate, run through some basic steps that might knock down some of the communication barriers. What? What are you going to communicate? A fact, an order, information, an attitude? Why? Why is it important? Why did the problem arise? Why is the communication necessary? How? How should you explain it? Orally, in writing, or both? Should you do it in your own office or out on the floor? When? When is the timing right? For you, for him or her? Can it wait? Should you take care of it now? Who? Who is the person you're communicating with? Do you know his personality, her attitude? Have you examined his point of view? Do you understand her needs? And of course, once you add everything up, you've got to watch the language barrier. Now, you remember, Miss Rowan, the first page of the Frantis has got to have the fortress pad included. And uh, don't forget the Friedel wasp. A little over communications can put the receiver mentally to sleep. Now, I know this is taking a long time, Murrow, but it's important to get all the details, and I want to go over a few more points on item 26. You see, what I think should be done in this instance is to take what we can call a long-term look at the project. That is, I mean, we've always got to look ahead and plan. You can under-communicate, too. Higgins, I've got to rush out. Order came in from Highland Company. Take care of it. Uh, tell me how you came out later, okay? Who's Highland Company? You see what I think should be done... In Matter of fact, if you don't keep your language simple and clear, you can make people not want to communicate back. And this two-way communications, this feeding back, is important no matter where you sit on the management line. But you don't only communicate with your voice. There are unspoken communications that often speak much louder than words. 
and often unthought of communications. You watch for them in the receiver, and he watches for them in you. Maybe they don't communicate too loudly when you isolate them like this. But in a given circumstance, these unspoken communications can often change the meaning of words. Rogers, it's imperative that this assignment be completed fast. Understand? Everybody's got to pitch in and get this job out fast. Now, I want you gentlemen to leave this meeting with the realization that in this organization, people are our most valuable asset. Sure. Come in, Wilson. Door's always open. Always got time to talk to one of my people. Oh, Helen, come in. I wanted to talk to you about something. It's come to my attention that you've been violating a company policy. And I want to remind you about it and issue a preliminary warning. There's absolutely no smoking on the job. Sure, your feet, your hands, your eyes, your face, and your heart reflect your attitude. And your attitude builds the climate, the atmosphere in which you and your people work. A basic natural climate of fairness, honesty, and mutual respect that keeps the communication lines clear and open both ways. So people know always where they stand with you. And you know where you stand with them.